welcome back to Engadget Stage on at CES 2019. It has been a long day, and forgive me for <laughs> that little <laughs> error right there. I'm Sherlyn Lowe, reviews editor at Engadget, and today we're here to talk about Intel, who has some 5G news here at CES 2019. And here with me is Sandra Riviera, who works at Intel uh, in the networking group. Yeah. Yeah, as the good. senior vice president, it became, I came close. You can read lower in third. But we're here to hear about uh, Intel's news at CES, particularly regarding 5G. Uh, Sandra's here to break it down for us. She knows everything inside and out. So yeah, take it away. What did you tell us, uh, everybody here at CES? Uh, well, thank you very much. Of course. Uh, so 5G, for those of you that are not so familiar with it, is really this uh, convergence of computing and communications. So it's where computing and communications really come together. And there's an evolutionary part of 5G and there's a revolutionary part of 5G. And the evolutionary part is the part that most consumers would be familiar with, which is, oh, I get faster speed uh, with every G, right? Yeah. 2G to 3G, 3G to 4G, 4G to 5G. And of course, 5G has all of those innovations on the wireless uh, air interface side to yeah. bring you faster speeds. But there's also a revolutionary part of 5G, which is how we're bringing compute much closer to the endpoint. For example, we're playing a cloud gaming application not on some of our beautiful 8th gen core uh, PCs or laptops, <laughs> but on my phone yeah. that I could still have a great experience because I have edge computing in an edge data center, an edge cloud, if you will, um, that is delivering to me all that computing capability right. to have that same cloud. type of high-end user experience that I would expect on a high-end gaming machine. It's also about machines connecting with other machines. So we move into this realm of uh, not just billions of people connecting, but tens of billions of things and machines connecting with each other. We're like smart home devices, connected appliances, those things communicating with yeah. each other. My garage door will be able to tell from my car that I'm coming home, that sort of thing, right? A actually, that's a great set of examples. So it's about smart factories and smart homes and smart cities. But yeah, it's uh, in fact, there's a lot of examples here. Smart washing machines and smart refrigerators. And uh, in a city, it would be smart meters or smart lighting. And all of that um, gives you now the ability with, again, this virtually unlimited compute to be able to aggregate all of that data uh, that uh, that is somewhat disconnected and not really organized in any way or where you don't really have a way to derive any value out of it. But now with a smart city implementation where you have 5G uh, helping you collect all that data, process that data really right there in real time and making smart decisions about traffic flow or safety environments or if you have computer vision, things like um, object recognition or facial recognition to know, you know, this is uh, somebody that shouldn't be in this secure area mm -hmm. or this is an object that uh, seems like it is misplaced here, it shouldn't be there. I mean, those types of applications. So yeah, uh, smart homes, smart cities, uh, smart factories, a lot of what we see coming with industrial IoT yeah. and different applications for, for 5G technology. So where does Intel see itself playing a role here? You know, in many ways we have been defined uh, by being this PC-centric company. Very and of course we've had extraordinary success in building out this capability uh, in the in the PC uh, business, um, but we're moving to a strategy where really we are the technology and the innovation behind all of the world's data. Having that system level view of the interaction, the securing, moving, compressing, uh, storing uh, all of that data really gives us this unique position where we're able to deliver to our broad ecosystem of customers, this consistent um, silicon architecture top to bottom, and just a lot of tools by which developers can create. Is there anything uh, you want to tell us about your upcoming uh, partnerships that I saw announced yesterday as well? Yeah, yeah so um, 5G makes a lot of that sports and entertainment experience a lot more personalized, okay. a lot more immersive a lot more fun yeah and so last year in the Pyeongchang uh, Winter Olympics we were able to demonstrate actually we stood up the world's largest 5G working network it was uh -huh. um, you know 4,800 terabytes of network capacity <laughs> uh, over 22 uh, different live links in 10 different sites thousands of people experiencing 5G technology 
whether it was in an immersive um, uh, VR capability where they were right. the athlete or uh, being able to personalize the experience, doing replays and uh, video stitching from or viewing uh, the arena from, yeah. there's no bad seat in the house, right? You can view right. it from any seat, any place. Uh, so we had thousands of people uh, really try and experience the Olympics in that way. So we're very proud of that. But, um, but that was just kind of a teaser because what we're now gearing up for okay. is the 2020 Olympics oh, in yeah. Tokyo. And you know, the Winter Olympics and the Summer Olympics on the scale uh, of you know, complexity and size yeah. is an you know, order of magnitude difference. And we're very excited about what we're gonna show there in terms of AI uh, capabilities, 5G, oh, 5G. Oh. Uh, of course, uh, capabilities, autonomous vehicles uh, that will be showing VR experiences. Mm. Um, the way that we're using technology to help athletes prepare and optimize their performance, which mm. is some of the things that we were showing even yesterday at yeah. the press briefing. So, uh, so yes, yeah, so the 2020 Olympics is on deck for next year, and then of course the 2022 Olympics will come in Beijing after this that, in the Winter Olympics. So, so we're a sponsor uh, of the Olympics, and we have a long run of new innovations and technologies where we're trying to bring more immersive, more enjoyable, uh, more expansive experiences to the Olympics. Uh, but one other thing that we did uh, last year with Fox Sports and yeah. at t and Ericsson was we actually uh, delivered the first US Open golf championship. Uh, we were there really broadcasting in 4K high definition uh, video without any wires. So this was all wireless technology oh, using that millimeter wave capability, nice. the new wireless innovations that come with 5G. And it just demonstrated how you can produce more of these sporting events or any type of, of right. entertainment venue without having to lay cables and wires and uh, eliminating a lot of the cost and the complexity of really putting up an event. You did test it in sort of a, a theoretical, you know, ideal situation. You know, wouldn't you think that when in in two years from now, 2022 perhaps, will there be a more congested network that would slow down performance and make that a little bit more challenging? Would you want to lay down cables as a backup and then the cost is a little double? And on cost, is 5G going to be expensive? Um, well, actually, the, the thinking is that 5G will, act, will let you deliver a lot more capability, a lot more cost effectively because the, the whole production of, of um, a capability or a service yeah. is more seamless and uh, requiring less physical sort of infrastructure, right? You can utilize what you have there with, uh, with new upgrades to the, the wireless equipment. But in many ways, while you do have to put in a lot of new infrastructure for 5G, the asset utilization that you get is much, much higher than what you have today. Yeah. Because today you have a lot of fixed function purpose built equipment, networking equipment, that can't be reprovisioned or reprogrammed to do anything else. And so when it sits idle uh, a lot of the time, which much of the network equipment does sit idle much of the time, it's kind of this sunk cost and this, yeah. this asset that you're not getting a full use of. So 5G in many ways, lowers your total cost of operation because in software in real time you're able to configure the infrastructure to support the use cases without having to design for the most stringent one. Yeah, right? yeah absolutely. Well, this has been such a deep dive into <laughs> the 5G and where Intel sees itself playing a key role in you know, the rollout of 5G that's, by the way, happening this year in case you're living under a rock. Apparently everybody believes that this is the year of 5G and that's what the industry thinks is going to happen. So hey, we have a lot more coming up, not just about 5G, but about AR, VR, AI, all of the buzzwords that you're going to hear <laughs> here at CES 2019. Stay tuned to Engadget.com for more awesome programming. Thank you so much, Sandra, Thank for you, your Sherlyn. time here with us. And stay tuned later. Bye, guys. <laughs>